Oh, hey, what's up, Vortex? Sorry, just touching myself a little bit. Just, just a tad. Just a, just a teeny tiny bit. So, uh, I, I want to show you guys something. It's a little, it's a little uh, gift that was just dropped off to me at my house. I never knew that aluminum foil could smell like a skunk, you guys. Damn. He like triple wrapped his shit. It does smell really good though. Smell that. I'm sure you wish you could smell that, but you can't. Um, so good. So fucking good. I'm really excited. You should smoke some of it. Just, just, a, just a little bit. Not too much. Just, just a little bit. Okay, you guys. Y'all in the vortex, do you want to watch me get high? Do you want to watch me smoke, 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 That's how excited I am about it. I can't even talk. I've been waiting and waiting all fucking day for my dealer to come to my house. Waiting. Anyway. At least he brought you a Ziploc bag this time. Most of the time he doesn't. Here's the thing, y'all. This is what I don't understand. Like, why do dealers put put drugs in, like, these kind of bags? Like, why do these kind of bags even exist? That's why I want to, like, I just want to ask the bag people. People that invented these kinds of bags, like, why? Like, what's the point? Like, what are you going to do with this? Like, you can't seal it or nothing. Bullshit. <laughs> mm. Yeah. This is real sticky. I love sticky-ass weed. That's, like, my favorite kind. Kind that's, like, really hard to break apart. Because, you know, if it's easy to break, it's probably not as good. Right about this shit, y'all. I'm black on the inside. So, yeah. He said he was going to be here like three and a half hours ago. <laughs> That's CP time for you, though. So, I've come up with yet another idea for um, my stuff, all my, my comedy stuff. Because I, I bought, like, all these notebooks the other day because they were only, like, 50 cents. I'll show y'all. See these beautiful notebooks? I really like composition books, by the way. But, uh... And some of them, unfortunately, are wide-ruled. I really hate wide-ruled, but I like the colors. It doesn't matter, though. A notebook's a notebook, you know? I mean, you can be all stingy about, you know, the fucking... Whatever, like, the size of the... The... Lines or whatever. <laughs> like, I don't see why you care that much. It's just annoying. I just prefer a college world, that's all. It's just a preference. Personal preference. But, yeah, um... I bought, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess I only bought six. Um, but yeah, they're they're awesome. And uh, what I'm gonna do, what I'm going to attempt to do anyway, is like organize my stuff. Like, but I'm gonna try to be as artistic as possible because if I'm as artistic as possible, then I feel like I'm more likely to use the stuff. That may or may not be true, but we'll see, won't we? Uh, so, haven't shot a video in a while. I mean, I've been, I've been like shooting some videos, but I won't put them up because I just don't like them that much. Or like, I feel like I'm just getting more and more offensive as time goes on, and I'm becoming like less and less 
concerned with like whether I like hurt people's feelings or like upset anyone in the audience like I guess because like I just feel like people aren't really like compassionate when it comes to me like people like me with my mental illness so I just don't have that compassion for other people that don't have it for me so you know goes both ways motherfucker goes both ways uh <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I mean, like, ever since I, I, I started doing uh, comedy, people have consistently made fun of me, either in a loving way or a hateful way. In a loving way, that's fine. You know, it's whatever. People just make fun of me because it's easy to make fun of crazy people, you know? But it just goes to show that, like, mental illness is more stigmatized than anything else, you know? And nobody has any problem being ugly about it. Um, it's like people are so afraid to make some sort of, like, joke about a race or an ethnicity or sexual preference or some shit like that. People are afraid to do that, but they have no problem whatsoever making fun of, like, the craziest person in the room. Because uh, nobody thinks that, like, that's wrong, you know? No, we're not at that point yet. Not that I really want them to be at that point, though. Because, like, I'm actually really glad, like, when somebody does make fun of me, I'm like, well, that's cool. <laughs> you know? Like, I think, it, I think it's awesome. It means people are, like, actually paying attention to my stuff, you know? Anyway. I told myself that I'd be breaking weed tonight. Do not even compare me to Walter White. Do not fucking do that shit. I'll be so angry. <laughs> Where's my grinder? Oh shit. Dude, didn't you look for it downstairs? Yeah, it's not it's not downstairs anymore. Oh look who's here. My old ass portable C D player. Do y'all remember these babies? It's fucked up. Like it it's awesome, but it's fucked up. Hey, look, it's, it's Popeye. Brad Edwards compared me to Popeye the first time I ever did stand-up comedy. He said I was the illeg 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 illegitimate. Yeah, that's right. Illegitimate. I was the illegitimate love child of Maria Bamford and Popeye. But I guess I saw like Maria Bamford and I was eating spinach. Like, I had spinach up there. It was, like, my comfort, you know, just in case I had a panic attack. I'm like, don't. There's spinach right there. Calm down. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, well. You guys are going to have to follow me down the stairs. Woo! Do you like all my hangy thingies that I have all over the place? I just really like hangy thingies. I don't know why, but I do. They're awesome. There you are. Elsie Tupac, come on. I'll show you Tupac. <laughs> oh my god. E. I mean, I think you're gonna have to turn another light for this shit for them to see him in all his glory. 
See, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if y'all can see him. He's right there. That's from his album, All Eyes on Me, that he did after he got out of prison. He's one of my idols. I used to fantasize about Tupac spanking me. Is that weird? <laughs> I think it was a little weird. <laughs> I mean, it's weird because, you know, you fantasize about that at a young age, like when you were like, you know, seven or eight. But I don't think getting spanked by Tupac would be so bad, you know? Like, oh, I don't mind being punished. I love to be in trouble. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're back to this. Breaking weed. Dude, the last time we did this, you had much longer hair. I know. That's so weird. That's so weird that you can, like, change your hairstyle. Like, whoa. Yeah, so, anyway, I was trying to explain to y'all that I'm trying to, like, divide my thoughts in ways that, like, I can make sense on on stage like like I don't know how people like do set list like I don't know how other people do it but it seems like everybody's like acting though which I don't like a lot of people tell me that the appeal to me is that I'm such a real person and that I it just I seem very natural love oh, that smell that's like the best like the like weed, like when you're grinding it, it just like totally brings out that aroma, you know? It's like, oh my god, I'm gonna get so high! <laughs> you get so excited. It's like, I, I already feel high, and I'm just smelling this shit, you know? It's beautiful! Yeah, but this is some good weed right here, man. Triple bagged! So, anyway, um... <laughs> What was I talking about? Organization. Yeah, so... Like, I have filled up this entire notebook. But a lot of stuff in this notebook is just like... Like, I'll have like a whole page like this. And then I'll have a page like that. You know, where I... It's just... Like, I was planning on writing something, but this was all I came up with. <laughs> just these two words, restaurant threats. What does this mean to you, Amy? Restaurant threats. You know, whenever you work at a restaurant and uh, you're really sick, you don't feel well, you're in a lot of physical pain, and you're like, hey, I gotta go, because I feel like I'm about to pass out, and I really, like, don't want to keep fucking up all the orders. And then, like, your manager and your coworkers are, like, pissed off that you're leaving and shit. Uh, and you're like, but I, I swear I'm not faking it, but they think you are because, you know, you're crazy and you've already admitted to being a hypochondriac. So they just think that you're, you know, lying about fibromyalgia. And, <laughs> God, man. They always make, like, threats, though. You know, and, and it's even worse, like, if you're sick and, you're, like, you're supposed to be at work. And you're like, oh, I can't make it, you know, my anxiety or like, I can't make it, you know, I'm, I'm throwing up or whatever. Now, granted, a lot of people, especially people that work at a restaurant, like probably drug addicts, they're alcoholics, you know, so it's like they're a lot more likely to be fucked up on something that's going to make them sick. But there's no excuse. Like if you're an addict, like you should know. <laughs> like this coworker of mine. He keeps showing up and he's just like fucked up all the time. And like last night he passed out in the fucking bathroom. Like my manager found him on the floor. <laughs> Cause we all just assumed that he was taking like one hell of a shit. And like he was in the bathroom for like 25 minutes. 
<laughs> and the manager came back and he was like, yeah, he was on the floor. And like the other day he left because he was like throwing up and shit. And my manager asked me like, did you give him anything? He's like, I don't care. You know, it's like, I know that you make pot cookies and stuff. And like, I was like, yeah, I gave him like half a cookie, but I guarantee that's not what fucked him up because like he came over to my house and he was on fucking Kalatapins and he ate two of them motherfuckers. That's right. He ate two of my pot cookies. If you eat like half of one of these cookies, like you're, you're good. Like you're set for hours, you know, like you don't need to eat anymore. This motherfucker ate two, two pot cookies. Plus he was already on Xanax when he got to my house. And then he drove all the way back to Shelbyville, which I'm, I think is like 45 minutes. An hour or something like that. Yeah, the motherfucker's crazy. And his girlfriend, like, just quit. And they're homeless, too. Like, they're out of their fucking mind. I'm like, if you guys are drug addicts, like, you should try to keep a job. You know, so... <laughs> you have money for your drugs that are so necessary. You know what I mean? Like, it's, that's, like, what my main concern is. Like, oh, you think it's rent? <laughs> Fuck that. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I always pay my rent. I do. You can ask my parents. I'm really good about that. And, like, I pay my bills. Sometimes I pay my bills late, but I still pay them. And, and if you pay them late, you know, you got to pay extra anyway. Speaking of that, you probably should go to the mailbox just to check. Yeah, I will. I will. Um, but, yeah, uh... What are we talking about? I don't fucking know, man. Uh, addicts, restaurant, restaurant threats. Well, yeah, the, a lot of times people get really angry because most people that work in a restaurant have anger issues and they get mad, like that they have to do extra work, you know, if somebody's sick. Um, or usually that means like, like if somebody calls out, like whoever's at work, you know, they're asked to stay. This happens all the time. But, like, what's funny, though, is that managers, they always, like, try to act like, like, if you don't show up, it's your job. But, like, that's not true. Like, we all know that's not true. That's why restaurants have such a high turnover rate, because, like, I mean, like, you can get fired, but, like, you can easily get your job back, or you can just get another shitty job. Like, it's it's not really that big of a deal. And like, you, you know, many places like you can show up really late or not show up at all. And you'll still have your job because like, they're that desperate. But people do make all kinds of threats though. It's like blank threats. Which makes sense why most of the people that work at restaurants have borderline personality disorder. You know what I'm saying? Well, because, like, we're more likely to be on the proverbial path of least resistance than, like, anybody else. And, you know, borderlands are hard workers, too. Especially us quiet borderlands, because we turn everything into some sort of game, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh my god! Let's see if I can make all these burgers and have everybody staring at me and yelling at me and I'm not going to have a panic attack. I'm not going to freak out. I'm not going to start crying. It's like, I'll cry about anything else, but I'm like, I'm not going to cry about like work-related stuff. Like, I mean, I've definitely cried at work, but it, it very rarely has to do with anything that's happening at work, you know? It's just me. And like, I'm upset about something. It's, like, really the only person that's, like, seen me cry at work is, like, my black coworker Tina. She's the only one that, like, registers with her. Like, oh, yeah, she, she got illness. <laughs> it's, like, she acknowledges it. Like, I mean, well, my manager, she acknowledges that. Like, they, they know I have anxiety and stuff, but it's, like, there are, like, different scales. You know, there's, like, depression, anxiety. You know, that's pretty, like, established in society. Most people have that shit. And then there's, like, you know, a mental illness which seems like more serious, you know, and people don't want to accept that. But if I, if I told people like, I have 
like a straight up personality disorder. It's not just like a regular ass mood disorder that I can just pop some antidepressants and be on my way. You know, like it's not like that. It's not that easy. There's people, there's less and less understanding about, about illnesses, like the further you go. But if you have a mental illness, like any kind of mental illness, it's just like, take it just as seriously as, as you would a physical illness, because it's going to affect you even more than a physical illness will. Um, mainly because the fact that other people can't see it will make you feel victimized. Just saying. So, yes, yeah, so I, I, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to organize my stuff. Um, and it's, it's not working out that well. <laughs> yeah. Cause you keep adding, you never fucking subtract, baby. You never do it. Like you keep saying that you will, but then. You just reiterate, basically. Be like, here's a revised version of that ten more times. <laughs> yeah, dude, whenever I write, like, an actual set list that I perform, I usually rewrite it, like, at least five times. Because, like, I want it to be perfect, you know? And it's, it never is, but I tell myself that there's that chance that it could be perfect. Look at this shit. I have to break up all this fucking weed. All of it. Yeah, but then you get to make pot butter, man. Stop whining. <laughs> like, oh, my life is so hard as a drug addict. Oh, boo-hoo. I feel so sorry for myself. <laughs> so I was actually just waiting and waiting for him to show up because, like, I really wanted to get started on this. Not like I'm not going to stay up all night anyway, especially because I had a cup of coffee just now. But, like... I just wanted to get started sooner because I was hoping that I could make the butter tonight, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm probably going to do it tomorrow. Um, I don't even need to, though, really. I could probably just do it on Tuesday or Wednesday. God, I'm so excited. I've been going to this other place to do comedy, and it's cool. I just... I feel like I... Am too dark for the South. <laughs> you should get the fuck out of here. Like, you should go somewhere else. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm a loose cannon, though, so... It's like... People don't know if I'm gonna have, like, a mental breakdown on stage or whatever, so it's like they're really taking a chance anytime they give me a, a microphone. And... It's like I've had, like, fucking, like, dudes tell me that, like, I need to watch it. And I mean, just having, like, a man tell you that. Like, you say stuff that's, like, it's, like, too, too racy, like, even for a dude to handle. Like, you know, I feel like guys are, like, less sensitive about stuff. Like, they're, I think that's why, like, that there's this, like, stereotype that, like, women aren't funny. And I know that I've contributed to that because I've actually said, point blank, women aren't funny. But, um... <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's just a lot harder for us to be funny in, like, a man's world or a book. Like, you know, there's that, like, pressure. But it's like, I just, I don't really feel like any gender, like, I, I just don't think that gender should matter. It's like, I don't think that race should matter or sexual orientation should matter, ethnicity should matter, like, it is... I mean, it's just easier for me to make fun of white people, and it's easier for make, me to make fun of women, and it's easier for me to make fun of Americans, you know? Because, like, I just see, like, the bullshit of, like, all those things. And I think it's, like, really ignorant. Especially, like, if you're a woman, it's really, like, ignorant to be like, oh, that doesn't exist, you know? Like, that's wrong for you to say that. Um... But I have a vagina, bitch. I can say whatever I want, like, about women. Because <laughs> it's, it's mainly true. But, yeah, I, I just, uh, don't know. It is harder for women to be funny. Because we're expected to just be pretty. 
you know? And like, I mean, I don't, I'm not pretty. So like, that's why I'm so funny. Cause I stopped wasting my time on my looks, you know, cause it's not worth anything to worry about that. Anyway.